Milescraft Joint Pro can be used to drill matching holes on mating components for projects in several configurations quickly and easily. The Joint Pro is designed to drill holes for dowel pins size quarter inch, 5 16 inch, or 3 8 inch in diameter. To determine which size dowel pin you should use for your project, choose the dowel size based on the thickness of your boards. Boards 1 half to 5 8 inch use quarter inch dowels. Boards 5 8 to 3 4 inch use 5 16 inch dowels. And boards 3 4 to 1 and 1 half inch in thickness use 3 8 inch dowels. The Joint Pro arrives from the factory preset to drill 3 8 inch diameter dowel holes. To drill quarter inch or 5 16 inch diameter dowel holes, remove the M5 pan head screws, then reposition the interchangeable bushing blocks so your desired hole diameter is closest to the upright. When it's been repositioned, reinsert the M5 pan head screws. To get started using the Joint Pro, simply select a drill bit that corresponds to the selected dowel pin size. Slide a Milescraft or similar drill stop over the drill bit. Insert the drill bit through the correct drill guide bushing until it protrudes past the surface of the Joint Pro. The depth of the hole will vary by the configuration of the mating pieces, but regardless of the final depth, it's recommended the holes be drilled 1 8 of an inch deeper than the length of the dowel's insertion depth to provide room for the glue. Once you've determined the appropriate depth for the hole and added the recommended extra 8 of an inch, rotate the drill stop until the set screw is over the outside diameter of the drill bit, and then tighten the set screw. Now let's demonstrate the Joint Pro in use with these common dowel pin joints. To drill for a corner joint where two boards are joined along their length with one edge 90 degrees to the face of the other board, install the two position clamping posts on both the main and auxiliary bodies in the following configuration. Lay board number one flat on the work surface with the surface to be joined flush to the edge facing you. Place the main body and auxiliary body on board number one as seen here. Then tighten the fixed position clamp on both the main and auxiliary bodies to secure the board to the work surface. Next, place board number two on the jig at a 90 degree angle to the first board. Take a moment to double check the boards align accurately with each other before drilling the mating holes. If board number two is properly aligned, clamp both the auxiliary and main body clamps to secure it in position. Starting with the power off to your drill, insert the drill bit into the appropriate drill guide bushing Turn on the drill and drill a hole to its proper depth. For this particular setup, the depth of the hole for board number two isn't as deep as that needed for board number one. So after drilling all the holes necessary for board number two, readjust the drill stop for a deeper hole in board number one, remembering to include the extra eighth of an inch for glue. And depending on the length of the board for your project, you may need dowel pins in several locations. To locate these extra pins, keep the auxiliary body locked in its current position, but loosen both clamps to the main body. Then slide it into position for the next set of holes and retighten both clamps. Then simply repeat the drilling process as previously. After all the necessary dowel pin holes have been drilled, remove the main and auxiliary bodies and insert dowel pins for a dry fit prior to gluing it together. If everything aligns appropriately, you're ready to add glue and assemble the joint. For an edge joint to create a wide panel, install the two position clamping posts on both the main and auxiliary bodies in the following configuration. Start by laying board number one flat on the work surface with the edge to be joined flush to the edge facing you. Place the main and auxiliary bodies on the board as seen here and tighten the fixed position clamp on both bodies to secure the board to the work surface. Next, place board number two on the jig in the same orientation as board number one, but take a moment to use a square to ensure both boards are aligned with each other and fully seated into the clamps. If both boards are properly aligned, tighten the clamps on both the main and auxiliary bodies to secure board number two. With the power off to your drill, insert the drill bit into the appropriate drill guide bushing, turn on the drill, and drill a hole to its proper depth. Depending on the length of the board for your project, you may need dowel pins in several locations. To locate these extra pins, keep the auxiliary body locked in its current position, but loosen both clamps on the main body. Then slide it into position for the next set of holes and retighten both clamps, and then repeat the drilling process as previously. After all the necessary dowel pin holes have been drilled, remove the main and auxiliary bodies and insert dowel pins for a dry fit prior to gluing it together. If everything aligns appropriately, you're ready to add glue and assemble the joint. 
For a project where you need a mating component, such as a fixed shelf, in from the edge at a given distance, you'll want to create a surface joint. Place both the main and auxiliary bodies on board number one as seen here. Tighten the fixed position clamp on both bodies to secure the board to the work surface. And then with the power off to your drill, insert the drill bit into the appropriate drill guide bushing, turn on the drill, and drill a hole to its proper depth. Depending on the length of the board for your project, you may need dowel pins in several locations. To locate these extra pins, keep the auxiliary body locked in its current position, but loosen the clamp on the main body, then slide it into position for the next set of holes, and retighten the main body clamp. Then repeat the drilling process as previously. To drill the corresponding holes in the face of board number two, start by measuring in from the edge, and then draw a center line for the dowel hole locations. Unclamp board number one and insert dowel pins into the holes and position both boards as seen here. Board number two is flat on the work surface with the surface being joined facing up, and board number one is placed on top of board number two with the installed pins pointing toward the center line you just drew. Depending on the size of the dowel pin you're using, you may need to relocate the correct bushing block so it's closest to the dowel alignment slot. Then line up the bushing block center line marker with the center line you marked on the surface of board number two. Then advance board number one towards the jig until the installed dowel pin is in the corresponding size dowel alignment slot and the jig is resting firmly on the face of the board with its alignment mark aligned to the center line. Lightly clamp this end of both boards to the work surface and then repeat the process at the opposite end, checking and rechecking the alignment of both boards until they're accurately aligned and the mating surfaces being joined are paralleled with each other. Then securely clamp the boards in position at both ends. For this particular setup, the depth of the hole for board number two isn't as deep as that needed for board number one. So after drilling all the holes necessary for board number one, readjust the drill stop for a shallower hole in board number two, remembering to include the extra eighth of an inch for glue. Start by firmly holding the joint pro in position, aligning the dowel pin into the appropriate dowel alignment slot, and then with the power off to your drill, insert the drill bit into the appropriate drill guide bushing, turn on the drill, and drill a hole to its proper depth. Then slide it into position for the next set of holes and repeat the drilling process as previously. After all the necessary dowel pin holes have been drilled, insert dowel pins for a dry fit prior to gluing it together, and if everything aligns appropriately, you're ready to add glue and assemble the joint.